It's time again for Conversations with Indie Authors. Today we have John Lysiter from BC, Canada. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Thank you so much. How, can you tell us more about your journey as a self-published author and what inspired you to write over 100 books? Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, I'm 58. And as you said, I live in Vancouver. And I've always been had a very artsy spirit. When I was a boy, I wanted to be a comic book artist. And this was back in the 1970s. And it wasn't really as mainstream as that kind of stuff is today. It was kind of stigmatized. So I always felt like kind of a, an outsider, uh, uh, kind of outside of the mainstream because of my love of comic books. And, and I, as I said, I wanted to be an artist, but I, gave, I got lazy and I gave it up. And then after high school, I tried acting for a couple of years. I was in my early 20s. I tried acting for a couple of years. I had an agent and I was going to auditions. I was uh, doing some writing back then, too. I mean, writing has always been the one constant in my life over the first 53 years, a kind of willy nilly kind of sporadically, but I was writing scenes in acting class and I was writing my own monologues. And some of the uh, casting directors, when I went to auditions for roles that I obviously never got, they seemed to be very impressed that they had never heard, you know, my monologues because most of the other kids, I guess they were taking monologues out of the books. I was an extra in Rocky four. That was probably my 15 minutes of fame. Big uh, fight at the end with Ivan Drago was shot at the Agrodome in Vancouver. Uh, in 2019, I and this is when I became a self-published author, I had written a whole bunch of short stories in, around 2005. I was working one shift as a security guard. I was understimulated. And I just cranked out these short stories. I created a character. Here goes shamelessly plugging his product. My hero is called Lee Hacklin, and he's a private investigator, and he's a total badass, but he's a very sweet-natured man like myself, or so I like to think. But he's much braver. You know, he's a hero. And so I cranked out these short stories. Or really, I had no intent of publishing them. Back then, I was just writing them for my own amusement. So after I reached out to God and I asked him to help me, I, I have to thank God I kept them. I, I had this huge pile in my bedroom and I dusted them, dusted them off and read them. And I don't know if you do any creative writing, uh, Brittany, but it was the first time where I was reading something as if somebody else had written them. And I thought, gosh, you know, I know this is not great literature, but I really like this guy, probably because he's an idealized version of myself, which is something I, I think a lot of writers do. I think that's what Ian Fleming did when he created James Bond or Tom Clancy when he created Jack Ryan. You know, there are avatars, right? They're like cool, cooler versions of us. So that was the beginning of my journey. It was a tremendous uphill struggle for me because I'm not a tech savvy guy to get that first book. Uh, published. I cobbled all of these stories together, plug, 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 and they became my first book, The Collected Cases of Lee Hacklin, 1970s Private Investigator, book one. And I set my stories mostly in the 1970s because I don't want to deal with technology. I think it's boring when the hero goes online. You know, it's, it's always more interesting to me when the hero has to do the legwork. So I started going to the library after work and on my days off, and it took me you know, a month. It took me like 100 attempts to get this darn book published i thought you know three clicks of a mouse and boom i'm a self-published author and right and it's such an important life lesson right when we and i think this some of your listeners might benefit from hearing this even though they probably already know it when we embark on a journey something that's cool and fun and creative especially we have to have it in our mind's eye that there's going to be hiccups along the way right there's going to be unforeseen obstacles and that it's okay that we actually need that stuff that's you know that's what makes once we cross that finish line and we look back and say you know I you know I did that I actually stayed the course so I had tremendous help from library staff and I remember this glorious day in 2019 where for the first time it appeared on the, on the screen before me your ebook has been published and I was just walking on here and I was just walking down the street I just wanted to shove my phone in people's faces it's like hey look what I did you know you might think it's total garbage but it means everything to me so my my inner monologue went from procrastinating to, well, you know, I'm 53 and I'm not used to feeling this way. I know there are people in this world like Arnold Schwarzenegger who feel that way all the time, right? They have a goal, they move towards it, they achieve it, and then they move on to the next thing and then the next thing. And then and then at a certain point, that's it, we're done. But at least, you know, we, we the important thing is we left something behind and that we felt that we fulfilled, you know, that the purpose that we were meant to fulfill. So now it's 2023. And as you said earlier, I've got about 100 of these things uh, up and I'm publishing another two this weekend. I mean, they keep coming up. I mean, I think all I think a lot of the, all that time that I spent watching all of these movies and TV shows and reading all of these comic books and novels, you know, I tried. I mean, I overdid it because I could have started doing this much, lo much longer ago, but better late than never. 
I prefer to think of that now as, as an investment of time. And what I'm doing is I'm just regurgitating all of this stuff, if pardon me for being a little bit vulgar, and but I'm doing it through my own filter. And this is what I'm always telling people who want to do what I'm doing that comes before. What makes it original is that it comes from you, your unique life experiences, my unique life experiences, all the nutty and idiosyncratic people I mean, we, that we encounter in our lives, including ourselves sometimes, right? And we all have a story. I mean, have, 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 don't you know people who've told you a story that was wilder than anything that you, you saw in a movie or a TV show, right? We all have these kinds of stories. And what I've discovered over the last four years is that I don't have to will myself to do this. That's when you know you're on track. Like if I had to will myself, like I just cranked out like three pages on my dollar, st dollar store duo tank before doing this podcast. It, it, there's nothing, I mean, I don't mean to be overly self-aggrandizing, but we're all good at something. And this is what I like to think anyway. I mean, I'm my own biggest fan. You kind of have to be. This is what I like to think that I'm good at. And if I like, uh, yeah, my original point was if I had to will myself to do it, then, then I wouldn't do it. Difference between quitting because something gets too hard. There's a difference between quitting and discovering that something is, is, is not a good fit for me. So to any of your listeners out there who have this habit of quitting, which is a hard habit to, great, to break, if they were to ask me for advice and if they were open-minded to it, I would say you have to change your mindset. You have to, you have to be more philosophical about life and, and you have to uh, uh, change the way that you think. And it's going to take time. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. And, 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 and you, have to, you have to motivate yourself to do it. You can wait for something to happen, which is kind of how it worked out for me. And again, for me, my motivation was just loneliness. You know, I just hit a wall. I just hit the saturation point. You know, some kids, they come into the world and they know exactly what they want to do. And my message to the world is better late than ever. And one more thing I want to say, my voice is drying out, <laughs> is that we have to live our lives in the present. Never mind the past. The past is done. And never mind the future because the future is unknown. I mean, we can plan for the future. We can make positive plans for the future, but we have to be open. We have to be open to all of the hiccups and the obstacles and all the little unforeseen uh, irritations that can drive us crazy. Oh, that is my story in a nutshell, <laughs> a very long winded nutshell. All of my books are available on Indigo, uh, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Apple, and a few others. I use a website called uh, draft to digital this recent book that I uploaded is called Lee Hacklin, Private Investigator in Destructive Consultant. And Lee becomes a creative consultant for a new Private Eye a TV series. And shortly after, he's um, he's hired the star of the show, who's egomaniac. You look at Peanuts or Archie Comics. I mean, these characters have been popular you know, with each new generation because we see ourselves in these characters. We all know a boy like Charlie Brown, or we see ourselves in Charlie Brown, or we know a girl like Lucy, or we see ourselves in Lucy. And so I feel like that's my strength as a writer, that I'm able to come up with, again, I don't mean to pat myself on the back too much, but I feel like I can create characters that the reader, if I ever have any, if I ever have a significant readership, I uh, can relate to. So there you go. Oh, I have, a, I have a group page called Johnny's Way, and uh, I write what I like to think are uplifting and inspirational essays. I also post videos of myself reading uh, my books into the phone. And uh, my face Facebook page is uh, John Leister. And if you go on YouTube and type in John Leister author, you can check out some of the other podcasts that I've been on. And, and hopefully we'll see this one there too. So that's that. <laughs> John Leister, 611 at hotmail.com. Now, time permitting, I've done this before. I would be more than happy to email anyone who's interested one of my short stories or one of my novels. And maybe I'll, we'll wrap this up with this. The most important thing of a question that you can ask yourself is, Am I enjoying the journey of my life? If you're not, then you'd better make changes because time slows for nobody, right? And, and so that's, I think I've run out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. That's a perfect ditty. But I think we got a really good grasp of who you are and we know where to get your books and where to find you online. So Thank you I so much, Brittany. I covered everything and I appreciate it very much. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of the Zarlaquan podcast. And to all of you passionate readers, don't miss out on the enriching content we offer at Zarlaquan.com. Join the community and be the first to know about our latest updates. Remember to subscribe to our newsletter so you never miss a beat. 